Once your blood runs orange and blue, orange and blue. 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 this, this is, the pod, is the pod for you. For you. You're listening to Orange and Blue Bloods, hosted by EJ Stewart and Tommy Beer. Let's get to it, New York. But um, let's get to our last story for today. And a former Knicks coach is hoping to restore one of the city's most iconic basketball brands to glory. Rich Pitino was introduced Tuesday as the new head coach for St. John's men's basketball team. Pitino spent the past three seasons at Iona, where he went 64 and 22. He made two NCAA tournament appearances with the Gales. He left Louisville after the 2017 season somewhat in shame amid a slew of scandals. The final one being a pay-to-play scheme that involved the FBI investigation. Uh, there was also a scandal in 2015 involving a former escort who said that she was hired by Louisville assistants to party with recruits. Patina was suspended five games for that scandal, and the team had to forfeit its place postseason aspirations for that season. So uh, Matino definitely comes with a cloud of, you know, mess, uh, which is kind of where he's been for a lot of his career. But – He's a two-time national champion. He won both at Kentucky and Louisville. He made uh, three uh, final fours with, you know, three different schools. So uh, I don't know if anybody's ever done that. It, it, they have very few guys have done that. So Rick Pitino, uh, a legendary coach, an iconic coach, kind of um, out of the, the main lens of college basketball, now kind of back into the mainstream, so to speak, with St. John's. Uh, how do you feel? Do you think Rick can bring St. John's back? Like, it's been a long time. Like, I feel like there's been a really a dormant, sports brand in new york city for a while now 100 percent, and for that reason i'm okay with rolling the dice i mean if i look at the big picture this is a 70 year old man what's the mm-hmm. future what's the long-term picture obviously you'd like to hire um you know the young aspiring assistant or the you know the d2 coach that comes in turns the program around and is there for 30 years and you know has an arena named after him after like Carneseca, you know like that type yeah. of thing is is the ideal Knicks have tried that. It, it hasn't worked, you know, the Norm Roberts and the, and the other guys that they've kind of brought in and, you know, that they thought could recruit. It's, it didn't get the job done for whatever the case is. Um, so for that reason, I think it's worth the, you know, it's it's kind of similar to the Aaron Rodgers situation in New York, you know, like there's kind of a small window, um, but, you you know, the, 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 they've tried other things. They've tried drafting the quarterback multiple times. It just, it hasn't panned out. So let's go with uh, a guy that brings some, some, uh, some baggage with them, brings some luggage yep. with them, but he also brings games won. He also brings uh, legitimacy um, and, and a reputation for winning basketball games. I own a two out of three years, bringing them to the tournament. Um, yep. And the Knicks, you know, the combination of him in New York with the NIL opportunities, um, they are that that money has been a situation at St. John's funding the program yeah. and recruits, et cetera. That will not be a situation going forward. Um, he will have uh, and, and access to plenty of boosters um, that are going to come out of the woodwork um, and hopefully bring a little spark, a little energy, um, because when when the Johnnies are good, the city gets behind them. This is a city that yeah. is a, that loves basketball. Um, so let, let's hope he does. Um, I'm interested in your take, though. What do you think? Yeah. Do you think it's, it's worth a roll of the dice? It's crazy because I sit here as a Jets fan and St. John's fan who lambasted Aaron Rodgers for years with the Packers but said as soon as he came available, the Jets need to get him. I have a St. John's fan who lambasted Patino for our – I pretty much thought he wrecked the Louisville program with his lack of institutional control as the um, as the uh, NCAA, uh, uh, NCAA would say. And I'm saying that you have to get rid of Patino. This is kind of where it has to be because St. John's has tried everything. They got the longtime assistant who's a New Yorker and Norm Roberts. That didn't work. They got the TV personality and guy who people uh, could relate to in Steve Lavin. That didn't work. They got the former and St. Fran- John's great. Fran- yeah. Yes, and Fran- Fran- back in the day. They got the um they got the uh the the former St. John's great, an NBA great, um, who's never coached before, but you know, has a affinity to the city. He he's from here. Chris Mullen did not work. And now they, they said, you know, let's just do random. Let's just get somebody from out of nowhere, but who has won a lot. And let's see if they can do it. I know they've never won anything big, but they're a consistent winner. Um, that didn't work with Mike Anderson. So they have now tried pretty much everything and nothing has worked. So you have to go for the proven commodity. You have to go for the legend, the icon that is Rick Pitino. And look, I pretty much expect that in six, seven years, it's going to be some gnarly scandal that's going to make the school terrible and put this team back into uh, into purgatory. But 
at this point, what do you have to lose? That's where they are now. Like, like you know, and that's what's been disappointing since they're to kind of rebrand the Big East, where all these, you know, all the Catholic schools said they came together and they brought in some new schools, Creighton, Xavier, and such. You know, you looked at the landscape and said, okay, you know, St. John's, they have a chance in this Big East. You know, before when the Big East had Syracuse, something like you knew, like there was no chance St. John's was cracking through that Big East. Uh, when Louisville was in there, where Patino was with them, like that, that Big East was gnarly. I Notre Dame as well. But you saw this new landscape. Say, okay, Butler's here now. Creighton's here now. You think that St. John's, they should find a way to be a perennial tournament team. Maybe they'll win the conference one year. And it's just been nothing. Uh, they've had a couple of tournament appearances, but that's been it. They haven't had any success in this new Big East. And it's been shocking because there have been plenty of years. You know, I've been to some of these uh, media days and, and, and seen the, the, the preseason rankings. Some of these years, St. John's had picked to finish first or second or third in the Big East, and they never came close to that. So, um, I think it's an exciting day for St. John's fans. I think that uh, one thing I will say is it seems like this new president, uh, uh, you know, at the school, like he's invested in winning. Um, um, th- this is a totally different. Uh, Rick Tino said the only reason why I'm here essentially is because of this guy. Um, he, I guess they had a connection because of the Providence connection. And, you know, they're not going to accept what's happening with this basketball program. Now, it sounds like they're going to try to save some of this money by maybe uh, skimping out on Mike Anderson. Because then now they're trying to say he was fired with cause, which I don't know what he could have done to be fired with cause other than be a bad coach in lost games. But they're trying not to pay him. They're getting sued now. So I think they're probably saying, yo, we can just fight this guy in lawsuit. We're going to pay him five years from now because that's what happened with Kevin Ollie in UConn. But I think they're thinking we can save some money now and use this money on Rick, use this money on the facilities. And I'm hoping that they find a way to once again kind of make MSG their home court. Like I think one of the things that has really – Hurt St. John's is, you know, watching them play so many marquee games at Carnesecca Arena. And it is ridiculous. You know, I grew up when St. John's played, you know, about half their home games at Madison Square Garden. Now it's about four or five. Like, that's not going to happen with Rick Pitino. I, I assure you he's going to make sure they're playing at the Garden. And he actually spoke about uh, what it means to be um, the head coach of St. John's and playing at Madison Square Garden. So I want you guys to hear this from Rick Pitino. And today, for me, this is one of the most special moments of my life. I've been to the garden as the Nick coach. I've been to the garden as the Providence coach. And now I get to represent something really, really special. And it's not about when or if. It's going to happen for St. John's. And it's going to happen in a big way. But the first thing you have to do is you have to build a culture. Not only a culture of great basketball, exciting basketball, but a culture of academic excellence. A culture of treating everybody with great respect. A work ethic second to none, giving every ounce of perspiration you have in you for the name on the front, St. John's. I tell you what, like the one thing I will say about Rick, and I've always said this about him, is he's one of my favorite coaches. I, I say all this stuff about him being, you know, slimy and, and potentially, you know, getting this team in problem. Like he's a phenomenal coach. The way he prepares his team, the way he adjusts in games, like he's I've like I've loved watching Louisville. I was a little too young when he was at Kentucky. I've always loved watching Louisville play because, like, he's one of the best coaches. But, like, you hear that and you say, hey, I know why this guy is successful. Like, I know why this guy um, wins games because, like, that makes you want to run through a wall right there. You say, let's go. Let's get it. It's it's very rare that you get a guy that excels in the X's and O's and the motivation talking stuff. Exactly. And he checks both boxes. And that that's a rare commodity. And that's one of the reasons why he's been successful every single place he's gone um, is his teams have won. And I think the other uh, as far as the scandal stuff. Um, I listen, the, the, the prostitutes and all that other stuff that, that that's inexcusable, but as far as the pay for play, I always thought the NCAA was a joke yeah. to begin with, you know? So I, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to bash them too much because, um, it's a greedy corporation and the rules that they had in place basically enforced, um, you know, an, an unfair caste system. So I, I don't, I, yeah. I don't want to make too big of a deal about that. Right. Um, but I will say if you're going to get Patino, now is a good time to get him because the NCAA is in so much flux. The transfer portal changes the game to such an extent. The NIL stuff changes the game to such an extent. I mean, you watch these NCAA games. It's almost like every other player on the court, they'll go to the free throw line and the announcer will say, uh, started his career in Louisville, transferred to Kentucky, and now was back at uh, you know University of Charleston for a senior year. Yeah. Two or three colleges. Every one of these guys, it seems, I'm amazed. Um, you know, and 10, 15 years ago, you know, a guy would get, maybe he would only stay for a year, but rarely would you see a good player start somewhere else and then finish and let alone yeah. with the stop in between 
um, because you had to sit out that 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 transfer year. Um, that no longer being an issue, and that that transfer changes everything. And um, the the, the this Johnnies are going to have good roster spots. They're going to have rosters, you know, roster spots available. Um, yeah. And Patino will get guys to come, whether those guys stay healthy. Um, he's talking about academics. I don't think they're going to win any um, <laughs> any spelling bees. Uh, acad- or- yeah, no academic all Americans on this one. <laughs> I wouldn't put my money on on any academic all stars, um, but he will get guys that can shoot the ball. He will get guys that defend. He will get guys that are that are long and lean and, and can get up and down the floor and play the style, the brand of basketball that he wants to play. And he'll demand that they play that way um, because he comes with that gravitas, that that reputation. Guys will want to play for him and play hard for him. And especially it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy if and when the Johnnies start winning games, then that kind of only compounds on itself. Um, you know, NIL money starts rolling in. Um, St. St. John's plays more games at the Garden. You talked about it. Um, yeah. We had My family had season tickets for Johnny's um, late 90s, early 2000s. I was at the Garden when Bootsy, Bootsy Thornton scored, I think it was 42 to beat Duke. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, that was a big game. Those, those were big games. I mean, there, there was, oh, yeah. you know, it's hard to, um, it's hard for younger fans, you know, 20 year old kids to imagine. Um, and, 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 the, and the forget the Mullen Berry days, those predate yeah. me. Oh um, yeah, exactly. Know, That's like my dad's when the, era. When, yeah. When it was this, this Johnny's were arguably bigger in the city than the Knicks and Biggie's basketball yeah. was bigger <laughs> than the M- NBA for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, just, just that, 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 that little run that they had, uh, you know, at, near the turn of the century. Um, was a reminder of how big and and and, and how much um, uh, you know national how much attention they can generate if the if the St. John's is playing well. Yeah, back to back national players of the year with Chris Mullen and Walter Berry. Uh, Final Four appearance in which three of the four teams were in the Big East. Almost got four out of four that year. Um, yeah, that there was a golden era of college basketball here in New York, and maybe Rick Pitino can bring a little bit of that. Um, in, in this new era here, it's funny you mentioned the transfer portal and the ability to overhaul your roster very quickly. And that, I think that's why it's going to end up being very successful. I think that yes. um, maybe it's not year one, but it could be year one. He could just bring in crazy, <laughs> uh, crazy, awesome roster of transfers and one or two recruits. And that's really all you need. But um, definitely by year two, this is going to be a top 15 program. I, I'm that confident. But like he said in this in the post game, in the press conference, they asked him about like the future of the team and the roster they have. <laughs> he said, "Quote: A lot of these players probably won't be back on this team <laughs> because they're not a fit for me." Which is one of my favorite quotes I've heard since Deion Sanders in his uh, press conference at Colorado when he told the players in his first <laughs> meeting with them that he's bringing his luggage with him and it's Louis, and that they should think about getting in the transfer portal because <laughs> they're going to get a lot of plans on here. So. Um, Ray Pitino and Coach Prime clearly cut from the same cloth there. I haven't seen it. Has Soriano said anything? I know he was, you know, if Anderson's gone, I'm not coming back. Has he said anything since the, the yeah? I've not seen him say anything. I know he was very upset about uh, uh, right. Mike Anderson leaving, which is understandable. I mean, he, yeah, he yeah. came here, you know, because Anderson came here. Um, so here I have a quote here. Rick Pitino, uh, he said, Ask the character of the basketball team to be honest. I don't get into glowing reports, but I did get a glowing report on Joel Soriano. We're going to bring him to a level he didn't think he could reach. So Patino wants him, which makes right. sense. That's If there's any guy on this team you want to keep, I think you want to keep uh, a guy who's a walking double-double in Joel Soriano. But, um, but but yeah, I know I know he was very upset about what happened Mike Anderson. I'm sure this lawsuit isn't going to help their case. Yeah. yeah. Rick Patino is, as you guys heard in that, in that quote, I mean, he is a very persuasive person. He's a charismatic guy. He's a guy easy to like until you hear about some of the things he gets caught up into. But like so, so I think there's a chance maybe he can do this. Actually, I see here that he named uh, Soriano the captain of the team, oh, which is a, a big move there, right there. So, so maybe they've already squashed whatever issues Soriano may have had with the uh, with the firing of Mike Anderson. But exciting day, St. John, exciting day for New York basketball. Um, Rick Pitino, I think, is one of the, even though I know his Nick tenure was short, like just because of him being a Long Islander, um, him coaching the Knicks, um, him just being a uh, big East coach at Providence and Louisville for a long time was in the East. Well, I just think he's one of the, the important New York figures uh, when it comes to basketball. So him being head coach St. John's, I think is awesome. That accent is a guy that should coach St. John's, you know, you just hear. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that's a good place. To-